Get out, screw it, I'm too excited. He's gone. The Trump administration is over and we finally have a brand new, very old president. Unsurprisingly, Republicans are furious that Joe Biden chose to divide America by becoming president. And if that weren't divisive enough, he's openly plotting to do stuff. He is proposing a nearly $2 trillion plan to pay for a massive nationwide vaccination program and to give direct economic relief to millions of Americans struggling under the pandemic and saying now is the time for Americans to unify. Nice try, but Republicans say a real unifier would have handed the office back to Trump, given him a McRib and happily walked off to prison. After four years of struggling just to slow down Trump's malicious agenda, Democrats are in an unimaginable position. We can finally do things that help people. For the first time in a decade, Democrats have control of the presidency, the Senate, and the House, which means that for the next two years, we can confirm liberal judges and pass legislation that doesn't suck. But what about the filibuster, you ask? Well, first of all, don't ask me questions because I cannot hear you. This TV thing only works in one direction, which is really the only reason I do it. Secondly, yes, the filibuster is a maneuver that requires most legislation to get a supermajority or risk exposing Americans to Ted Cruz monologuing while he wassels into a diaper. But there's a maneuver within that maneuver called budget reconciliation. It allows budget related matters to pass with a simple majority, which Democrats now have using Vice President Harris as the tiebreaker. And there is a lot lot we can do with it. Rebuilding our infrastructure, combating climate change, improving our health care system. And that is exactly what we have to do. And I should tell you, uh, I will be the chairman uh, of the Senate Budget Committee. Uh, and when we put together a reconciliation bill, which will need only 50 votes, 51 votes, uh, I have those ideas in mind. That's right. Senator Bernie Sanders will be the chairman of the Senate Budget Committee, which means he'll be shepherding budget legislation through Congress. Well, at least until Mitch McConnell finds an extra page in the old Senate rule book that lets him challenge Bernie to a decathlon. Thanks to pressure from more progressive members of the party, this administration has already embraced an agenda that could dramatically improve life in America, especially for families. We're talking paid family leave, an annual $3,000 child allowance to assist parents, and universal preschool. I'm Katie Porter. I'm the only single mom of young kids in Congress. 43.6%. It's the percent of parents who had trouble finding their kid childcare before the pandemic, let alone being able to pay for it. 100%. It's the percent of three and four year olds who will have access to universal preschool under Joe Biden. Confused by all that math? That's how important preschool is. Universal pre-K would provide essential support to working parents. And studies show that former pre-K students are less likely to be arrested for violent crimes, more likely to be employed, and most importantly, less likely to leave a tip that's just a Bible verse. And now, like Adderall, the Biden administration is also in the position to help college students. 125000 for families making less than that amount of money. Um, Jill Biden is going to be pushing for all kinds of universities, not just community college, to be completely, completely free. I think one of the first things that President-elect Biden will enact is this $10,000 of cancellation of student debt for millions of Americans. Forgiving student debt and making community colleges free are things we desperately need. Globally, the United States is a leader in student debt, even more so than France, where students are required to spend an extra semester smoking cigarettes and having affairs with married diplomats. Or at least that's what I did when I studied abroad. <laughs> If all of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris's proposals were implemented, it could cut poverty in half. Among those proposals is a plan to make Section 8 housing vouchers available to every family who qualifies, which could reduce homelessness by a massive 75 percent. It's a complete 180 from the Republicans' plan, which was to tell unhoused people that the home they were looking for was in here all along. Democrats are also in the position to do something about climate change. That's right, mother we're coming to take your straws. Biden campaigned on an ambitious plan to combat climate change, including a $2 trillion proposal to spur the transition to clean energy, a stimulus to help the economy recover from COVID-19, 
could include massive investments for research into clean energy innovations, as well as green infrastructure, like electric vehicle charging networks. So you better get your shit together, Mater. Either go green or get recycled into wall art at Cracker Barrel. This administration's response to climate change could create millions of jobs and rebuild the economy. Joe Biden could be like a modern day FDR, both because he'll get people back to work and because when he's all alone, he also talks to radios. Unfortunately, there are limits to how budget reconciliation can be used. Biden can apply it to all matters involving spending, but he can't use it for pure regulation or legal changes. That means if he tries to address issues like statehood for D.C. and Puerto Rico, immigration reform and restoration of the Voting Rights Act, he'll end up facing the Klan's gambit. Aw, thanks for watching. If you'd like to hear more from Full Frontal, hit subscribe and visit our page for more videos. Or if you'd like to be radicalized, leave YouTube on autoplay.